There's a moment in every historian's journey where you stumble on a detail so clever, so brutally practical, that it forces you to rethink everything you thought you knew about wartime ingenuity. This is one of those details. When most people talk about the Second World War technology, they focus on tanks, aircraft engines, and cryptographic machines. But in the mud, forests, ruins, and foxholes, survival often came down to the tiny, desperate inventions that never made it into official manuals. One of those was a field battery improvised by soldiers who had no electricity, no functioning supply lines, and sometimes no hope of replacement equipment. Yet they still needed their radios working, because a silent radio could kill an entire unit. This guide takes you through that forgotten trick. How soldiers use nothing more than vinegar, coins, and graphite to assemble a makeshift battery that could keep a small field radio operating for weeks. It wasn't elegant, and it wasn't efficient, but it worked well enough to change the outcome of countless small engagements. And the best part is that the same principle can still be used today by anyone who understands what they're doing. The earliest versions of this trick appeared among resistance groups and reconnaissance units stuck behind enemy lines. Batteries for portable radios were heavy, unreliable, and prone to failure in cold or wet conditions. When they died, the operator either waited for supply, something that sometimes never came, or improvised. The improvisation began with a simple electrochemical insight. All you need to generate electricity is two metals with different reactivity and an electrolyte to transfer ions between them. Soldiers didn't use those words. They simply noticed that stacks of coins soaked in acidic liquid produced a measurable charge, and from that observation the method evolved. By the time field manuals unofficially circulated the idea, soldiers were assembling layered cells using copper coins, zinc-coated washers, or shaved aluminum as the positive and negative materials. Vinegar, which was widely available in rations, medical kits, and civilian homes, worked as their electrolyte. Graphite, taken from broken pencil leads or radio tuning components, served as a stable electrode for connecting their crude pile to the radio. The typical construction began with selecting the metals. Copper coins were common on every front. Zinc was harder to find, so soldiers often scavenged zinc carbon battery casings, metal roofing, or even fragments of ammunition boxes with zinc plating. The key was creating alternating layers, copper on one side, zinc on the other, separated by fabric or paper soaked in vinegar. The fabric acted as the electrolyte sponge, holding the acidic solution long enough for the chemical reaction to persist. A single cell of this kind produced only around half to just under one volt, depending on the purity of the metals and the strength of the vinegar. So, troops built stacks of ten, twenty, sometimes even forty layers, tightening them between improvised wooden clamps to minimize resistance. The graphite served as a stable, non-corroding conductor. It was pushed into the side of the stack or tied against the upper plate to give the radio operator a clean connection point. This wasn't some theoretical experiment. Radio operators in the Balkans, France, Burma and the Philippines relied on these devices to send short bursts of encoded messages long after their official batteries died. They weren't getting full transmission power, but they were getting enough. And in war, enough is often everything. 
Modern experiments confirm that a well-built vinegar coin battery works. It produces low current but steady voltage. For example, a stack of around 30 layers can run a low-draw digital device such as a quartz clock or an LED for several hours. A small AM radio may run intermittently, depending on the design. Anything beyond that, like a phone or GPS unit, won't work without capacitors and voltage regulation. But that's the point. This method was never meant for comfort. It was meant to generate a power source where none existed. If you build one today with proper copper and zinc pieces, soak your separators thoroughly and clamp the structure tightly to reduce internal resistance, you can absolutely get a usable trickle of energy. For survivalists, that's an invaluable reminder. Knowledge fills the gaps. Equipment leaves behind. In a remote emergency, you can, well, recreate the core of this World War II method using common items. You can substitute modern coins, aluminum can tabs, zinc from batteries, or even galvanized nails. White vinegar is ideal, but lemon juice works too. The graphite from a mechanical pencil becomes your stable electrode. Build a tight stack of alternating metals with vinegar-soaked paper between them and you'll have a functioning cell. If you need more voltage, just increase the number of layers. If you need more current, widen each layer. Once you achieve enough output to light a small LED, or charge a capacitor bank. You can perform simple tasks such as signaling, running a low-power transmitter, or maintaining a small radio set. The clearer you understand the chemistry, the more effectively you can improvise replacements when your equipment fails. That's why this trick remains valuable. Not because it rivals modern batteries, but because it proves that even in the most unforgiving situations, there's always a way to generate power if you understand the basics. The World War II vinegar battery is, frankly, a perfect example of soldiers turning desperation into innovation. It wasn't pretty and it wasn't ideal, but it kept critical communication alive when everything else failed. Studying it gives us a deeper appreciation for the craft, grit and resourcefulness that defined wartime technology far from the factories and laboratories. If you want more deep-cut survival history like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, share this guide with a fellow history enthusiast, and keep exploring the smarter side of human ingenuity.